Hello, welcome to my Frequently Asked Questions. So this is a common question that many patients ask me. What is a deep plane facelift and is that better than a normal facelift? So well, in answering this question, we need to consider a few things. What is a deep plane facelift? And how does that actually differ from other facelift techniques? What is the recovery involved? Is there discomfort? Is there swelling? Is there pain? Well, these are all, all important considerations. Let's have a look at a few case studies, a few examples of results. And then finally, well, let's touch on the fact, well, what is the best facelift for you? So in terms of things, well, as an introduction to myself, my name is Dr. Julian De Silva. I'm a London-based facial cosmetic and plastic surgeon and I specialize only in the face and I do facelift surgery every day in my practice. And about 20% of all the patients I treat are patients who have had surgery elsewhere and I do revision surgery. And I use additional techniques in terms of regenerative medicine, oxygen to heal the body faster. So, in a way, the information that I'm discussing with you today, well, in a way, it's, it's information based on science and my experience. However, it can never constitute a medical assessment and examination, and really, you do need to see a doctor to really define what the best treatment is for you. Now, in terms of facelift surgery, well, what is a deep plane? Well, before considering that, we need to think, well, what is the actual process by which we age because it's really the deep plane facelifting or other facelift techniques where we really want to rejuvenate the face but we don't want to change the appearance of the face we just want to undo the aging process we want to put things back to where they are and that's what gives a natural result so we really need to consider the anatomy well the very superficial layer of the face is the skin and there are skin only lifting techniques and those are the very old techniques in face of surgery however they tended to stretch the skin and give multiple lines in the skin and often they would pull resulting in pixie shaped ears and bigger scars and then we have the most common types of face that which really focus on lifting the smas and the smas is a layer beneath the skin that contains fat, contains some fibrous tissue, and it contains facial muscles. And then finally, we consider deep plane facelifting, which is the most um, advanced type of facelift surgery, which really applies to less than 5% of surgery, surgery that's conducted. So in terms of facial aging, what do we need to consider? Well. There are three common things that change with age, and one is the effect of gravity, the second is loose skin, and thirdly, there is volume loss. And so, when we actually look at how the face ages, well, this area just in front of your ear, demarked by this, this purple line, well, this area doesn't tend to move that much. Really, with gravity and descent, it's really more in this area, which, in medical jargon is called the medial area which is close to the nose so the medial part of the face really drops down and that leads to the jowls and loss of the jawline and that gives a more square shaped appearance so the commonest type of facelift which is called smas facelift surgery well this involves creating a flap in this area called the smas now this area is then pulled towards the ear. Now we can see with aging that actually it's not really this area that changes so much with aging. So although it will make a difference, it does lift this area and it does um, take away the loose skin, well it's not really addressing directly the area that changes with age. And so there is a chance the jowls can return and it's not lifting against gravity. Now in terms of facial aging, well, a deep plane facelift really goes all the way to this crease near the nose and the lips. This is called the nasolabial crease in medical jargon. And it lifts in a more vertical upward direction. So it really restores the natural anatomy to where it started. And so this process creates a more V-shaped face, which is more feminine, more elegant, and it really does sharpen the, the jawline. 
It's more challenging than other facial techniques. It really requires advanced knowledge of the, the anatomy because there are key, delicate, intricate structures in this area. It requires more time to complete. It takes anywhere from four to six hours and it may require additional techniques in order to get the very best result, such as reshaping the buckled fat, such as lifting the temporal area of the brow to avoid loose skin in this area. So in terms of non-surgical facelifts, well, this really isn't a type of facelift. And so it's generally patients who are younger, who have more volume loss and minimal loose skin. And these treatments often inc include fillers, but sometimes they also include radio frequency, threads, Botox, other treatments. But the important consideration is this is not really a facelift, even though it's often described with the same terminology. And the main issue with this is too much volume just doesn't look good. It doesn't look natural. And unfortunately, many celebrities and, and have, have their kind of photographs published in the mainstream media and it, it, um, it just doesn't look quite natural and there is a point where non-surgical treatments just don't offer a natural improvement. A skin only facelift, well in a way this is really for very early facial aging um, and where patients really only have loose skin and sometimes this can be because patients have hypermobility that is they have very flexible joints and so the way you're made genetically is the skin tends to be a bit looser and so in a way this is not like a true facelift because it's only really addressing loose skin and it's really for younger patients. A max facelift well this is a type of mini facelift and it really focuses on lifting the face with either two special stitches or three it doesn't allow much change in the neck, it doesn't allow for any variation on the technique such as deeper soft tissues, buckle fat, and so it's a simplistic technique that does offer an advantage for younger patients, um, but it does have limitations. My personal experience is, well, it's very difficult to use one treatment for all patients. It really needs to be customized for every individual. And definitely less is more. If you can just use a non-surgical treatment, then that's preferred. If you can just use a mini facelift, well, that is preferred. But for some patients, well, if you have more changes in the face, more aging, more loose skin, well, you really need to address this. Some patients may need additional processes. Um, procedures. If you have a really small chin, well, augmenting the chin, such as with a chin implant, will make a really big difference. Sometimes they can be prominent with buccal fat and that needs reshaping. And really, we can beautify the face by using the golden ratio to make the face more, um, more elegant. What is the recovery? Well, in a way, with, with scientific papers, they've suggested that deep plane facelifting has a faster recovery than other SMAS types of facelift. However, from my experience, the recovery really is balanced between what is done. The less surgery that is done, the faster the recovery is. And within that, there is so much individual variation. And with my patients, well, some patients who have quite advanced facelifting surgery, some patients look brilliant even at 24 hours. However, some patients can really look quite swollen. And so, I mean, this, this um, recovery period can vary quite a bit for most techniques. And generally, for most facelift surgery, well, you really need between two and six weeks. And some patients will recover really quickly in a shorter period. Some patients will really take a bit longer. Now, there are things that can be done with regenerative medicine to speed up your healing and recovery. However, it's always a good idea to allow a bit of extra time for recovery. So what are the factors with deep vein facelift recovery? Well, the common things are bruising and swelling. And these are the things that are the most frustrating for patients. What can be done in terms of um, speeding this up? Well, in terms of research, deep plane facelifting does recover faster than SMAS facelift surgery. From my experience, there is not necessarily a substantial difference in that. However, 
there are factors that we can use such as oxygen, such as regenerative medicine, such as sedation, anesthesia, all which can result in less swelling, less bruising and fast recovery. Pain is not a common factor with recovery from this kind of surgery. However, there is some tightness and there is always some numbness and, and these are normal aspects of recovery. In terms of the scars, well, key with facelift surgery is avoiding tension on the scars. And using these techniques, multiple levels of stitches, refining the scars so that they're placed in the natural curves around the ears, in the great majority of patients, most scars are difficult to see. There is about a 1% chance where the scars can be more troublesome, and this can include things like keloid scarring, and sometimes these scars need additional treatments such as anti-inflammatory medicines or even revision. So let's have a look at a few case studies. So this lady, well, she had considerable jowls, she had significant sagging of the skin and multiple lines and wrinkles showing that loose skin with volume loss. There's shadows um, that, that can show there's been volume loss in terms of the face. Well, deeply facelifting has really restored the natural anatomy. In addition, like fat transfer and nano fat transfer has improved the lines in the skin. And even though there's still swelling in this photograph, we can see that there's a marked improvement in, in, her, in the natural anatomy of her face. Now this lady, well, she has these kind of deep marinette lines and she has changes along the jowls, which are consistent with gravity, really in that central area, the area near the nose that I described to you earlier. And deep plane facelifting, well, it really restores that natural anatomy. And this is often an area where the buccal fat can be a bit prominent at the same time as deep plane facelifting, that buccal fat can be reshaped and that can really um, make this area much more elegant. And this is a challenging area, non-surgically and surgically, but using these kind of techniques, it can really be made significantly better. And this gentleman, well, he had quite a bit of aging in terms of gravity, deeper lines, um, significant asymmetry around the eyelids. His left eye was much more droopy and, and um, puffiness around the lower eyelid area. And afterwards, well, a combination of deep plane facelifting has restored his jawline in a very natural way. It's lifted the fullness around the lines. And at the same time, eyelid surgery and ptosis correction of the droopy eyelid, well, it's really given him a refreshed but natural appearance. So in summary, well, We've talked about what a deep plane facelift is. We've talked about how it differs from the other like facelift techniques. We've talked about facial aging and how different um, facial surgery can influence that. We've talked about the recovery and we've really come to a conclusion that, well, it does really depend on what you need as an individual person, what your individual facial characteristics are. How do you choose the right face lift for you? Well, key is finding the right doctor, the right surgeon to give you that kind of guidance and that will require some research in your area, finding a specialist who does a lot of facial surgery, um, looking for someone with experience in different surgical techniques and has a degree of artistry because 50% of this kind of surgery is technical detail and the other 50% is really, really artistry. There's no quick solution, but you need to do your research. So, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope this information has been useful for you. And if you have any other further comments or questions, or you'd like to sign up for my newsletter, please um, see these details below.